Okay, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you some more of the like day-to-day -day ins and out things that you might see in your brewery or things you can expect once you start uh, working as a brewer and a brewery or a brewer's assistant, something along those lines. Um, right now I've got to check gravity on a couple tanks, but I've got to drop the cone. In order to do that, I've got a, a little bit of setup. It's not, not too complicated. Your setup may be simpler. It may be more complex, but this is a fair representation of what you got to do. But anyway, enough, and uh, let's just get to it. All right. Okay, so if you can see here, we've got our outlet. This is for checking. It's got uh, kind of a petcock style uh, fitting on it, and it's got a ball valve. So we also have a ball valve down here on the bottom. Um, that's used for dumping everything out. Um, so if you're not familiar with how these conical fermenters are set up, they always have a drain very low on the very bottom, and then they have one that's a little further up. Sometimes they have a racking arm, sometimes they don't. Um, these don't have a racking arm. I believe we could add them to it, but we just don't. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna show you. Normally when you would go to check gravity, you would open this valve and then open this petcock, and that would allow some beer to flow out. You can see I've got a pretty thick slurry. Well, I don't know how well you can see that. Let me show you. So that's a pretty thick slurry. So that's not what we want. That's, that's got a lot of yeast and protein and particulate and things like that. So I'm gonna drop the cone and I'll show you exactly how I do that. Okay, so when I say drop the cone, what I mean is I'm gonna drop this, this large bit of sediment out of the bottom of the conical so that I can get clear beer to come down. Um, and the way that we do that is by, we have a 90 on the bottom of ours, that's fairly typical. Um, I'm gonna remove the tri-clamp and I'm gonna remove this, this cap. So we usually just put a flat cap on just to keep things sealed up. Um, so now I've got a tri-clamp with a length of tubing on it. Um, really honestly, you wanna have this tubing about as short as you can get it. Um, if your fermenters are up taller, that's better. Um, you could just put a bucket under there or something. If you're working with a really large fermenter, um, you'll want to connect a hose or something. But basically, you're just going to connect a length of tubing or something that allows you to open this up and go to a drain. So I'm going to show you exactly what I got here. All right, coming off the bottom of the fermenter, we got our ball valve, we got our, our tri-clamp, and then a length of the silicon hose. It's about one inch in diameter. And it just goes down in our drain. Luckily, I'm right here by an opening, so I don't need a very long length of hose. The reason why you want a shorter hose is this will get clogged up pretty easily. Um, the shorter it is, the easier it is to clean out. Um, the longer it is, the more difficult that becomes, but I'll show you my solution for that. But basically what I wanna do is open this valve. Now you see I've opened it. There's no other valve in between, I've opened it. and we're just slowly starting to get a trickle of sludge to come out. So you see that down there. So ideally you would want the sludge to come out in a slow but steady pace and fill up this tube, meaning that there's no clogs or blockages. In this case, I've got a pretty slow flow, if any at all. Actually, there's nothing moving currently. So I've got to fix that, and I'll show you exactly what I do to fix it. All right, so what I was gonna do is apply a little bit of CO2 pressure at the top, but uh, I actually don't have to. We started to get some flow. Um, usually if you give it a little bit, it will start to move, but sometimes you can get air locked inside, and if you provide a little bit of CO2 pressure, it'll help build up enough pressure inside the tank to actually just kind of push that through. Um, but in this case, I didn't need to. Um, but I don't want oxygen ingress and I don't want to suck sanitizer back up through here. So sometimes I'll just hit it with a little CO2 just to help clear that up. Um, but we seem to be coming out somewhat steady. This is about the pace that you would expect to see. 
um, and you're going to stop once you start to see clear beer. Okay, as you can see, we've finished dropping our cone. We've got clear beer in our line. This is a brown ale. So we have clear beer in our line, which means that uh, the bulk of that, that sediment cone has dropped out and is now, now pretty much just gone. Um, what you may want to do is put a little CO2 in your tank. Not, not a ton, you know, you got to let it bleed back out, but we're going to put a little bit of CO2 in our tank just to replace that head pressure, um, just to make sure that we don't accidentally introduce oxygen into the tank. Um, there's going to be a fair bit of troop that drops out of these tanks, so that's why you always want to make a much larger batch of beer than what's going in. So if you want to get a three full three barrels of volume, you know, you want to do like three and a quarter barrels. So just the cost of doing business. All right, so now we're going to check our gravity and you're going to need uh, a bucket. You don't really need to, it just depends how much of a mess you like to make. So I'm going to open this valve up and then I'm going to gently open this pet cock. And we're gonna to try to get some liquid beer to come out. There still may be sludge in the beginning and that's what the bucket's for. So once I'm getting clear beer coming out, or as clear as I expect it to be at this point, then I'm gonna close my pet cock. Sometimes you may have to open that up a fair ways and it's better just to close the ball valve in that instance. But in this case, we've done a good job, so. I'm just gonna slowly release beer and into our cylinder. If you see any mud that's kind of coating the side, uh, that would indicate that you still have a trube in there and that you don't have it quite clear enough. So there we go, we got a full pour so I'm gonna let this sit, find a bit of level ground and then let that sit and we'll take our actual measurement. And as always, don't forget to spray with sanitizer. So ensure that that's fully closed, seat that all the way and you're good to go. Okay, in case you're wondering, this is currently at, uh, focus, 1020, started at 1061, it's been about a week. So we know that everything is on track. I'm gonna measure pH just for reference, uh, but other than that, that's, that's exactly what you need to do. I know this video was a little bit longer than it probably should have been. I mean, all you're doing is dropping the cone, not that big a deal. But uh, there are some things that, while it seems obvious on the forefront, you may not realize them until you try to do it. Um, if you do end up in a situation where that cone is clogged, and it cannot come out. Always try to apply CO2 pressure to the top. Um, hopefully you have a way to do that. Um, the way that we do that here is with, well, I don't know where I've put it, but uh, basically we have a line that connects to the top. And uh, once you do that, that allows you to push CO2 in there uh, and only use a few PSI. I don't know what your tanks are rated to. These tanks are technically only rated to like a pound Will they hold more? Probably, but that's kind of what they state is like a pound or so. Um, but anyway, aside from that, about the only thing you can do is wait. So you can give it some time. Um, now, sometimes when you're cleaning these out at the end of, end of your session, your cycle, and you've transferred them bright and you're cleaning these out, sometimes what I'll do if that's clogged up down there, I'll take my garden sprayer and put it on the end of that silicon hose and just blow through it blow a ton of pressure through there until it's just like just jetting through the bottom of there and then let the hose off and stick it back down in there and let it let it drain and that always does a really good job of cleaning it out so hopefully you found this informative if not a still phrase uh from seth over at uh berm peak hopefully you found it informative if not i hope you found it entertaining um probably not but uh i hope you have a good day thanks for watching